on this episode, I'm gonna be starting our Radiant Floor Mechanical install. Have I ever done this before? No, but am I gonna figure it out? Yes. We ran our PEX tubing under the slab before all the concrete got poured. We have a couple videos on that if you haven't seen it yet, but this video is gonna be all about the mechanicals. That's the manifold that these tubes are coming up into, the control board, which takes care of all the distribution, and finally the boiler, which actually does all the heating of the water. And we're gonna have some fun and some good food along the way. So let's get started and hopefully you can learn something from this. Step one, remove the two x four that's been screwed onto our Unistrut bracket literally since when we poured our slab. I got this idea for the Unistrut and pipe clamps from Instagram to hold the pipes together and I really like how that worked. Step two, good vacuum of the stud bays because once I close them up, they're never gonna be seen again, hopefully. I'm taking a page out of Mr. Poe's frame, Paul Marshall's book here. All my utility room walls are going to be plywooded with half inch CDX plywood. That allows me to mount anything anywhere I need to without worrying off the stud is directly behind it and this proved to be super valuable. If you have a keen eye for insulation, you notice we're using Rockwell R23 Comfort Bat. A lot more to come on this. It goes in really quick though. Like once we get into insulating, it's gonna be like game over. We are ready for interior finishing at that point. Mm -hmm. Come on, baby. Hold your Hello. Look what we got this morning. This is what I call wintertime heat. Let's go over what I bought for the system. This is a Takagi TH3 boiler. This is rated for space heating and domestic water use, which is what I'm using it for. And this is a prefabricated board from the Radiant Floor Company there out of Vermont. Comes with all the controls, the pump, the mixing valves, the thermostat, all the way out to the tubes that connect directly to the water heater. Now, because I got this as a kit that has rigid tubing that connects that to this, that influences the location that I have to mount these things. This also has some clearances that I have to meet. It has to be 12 inches minimum from the ceiling, three inches from walls, and there's a bottom clearance too, but I don't need to worry about that. So I gotta keep all that in mind when I choose all my locations. So I'm actually gonna start with mounting these two things, not the, not the uh, manifold. The manifold's gotta go just right above the tubes, but I need to know what height to mount it based on where I'm gonna put these. In our prep video, you saw me put this manifold together. It's been holding at 60 PSI for many months now, and I'm pretty confident there's no leaks. So it's time to cut this off and get our real manifold situated. This is the tubing manifold that I got from, I think, pexuniverse.com. I got a seven loop, even though I have six circuits. I was thinking we would use one extra for the bathroom, but I think I've changed my mind since then. So I'll be plugging one of these loops, but I'm just doing the initial assembly now to see how far these things are gonna stick out. And that will also influence where my boiler and main board gets mounted. Of course, the tubing coming out of my slab is another constraint that I have to think about. Here's a good example of me for most of this project. Stop, stare, and think really hard until you walk away. Before cutting the tube, I made sure my supply and return labels were still intact. That would not be fun to cut those off. Quick flashback from our install video about why it matters which side is supply and which is return. I just used some duct tape to label my runs. So they are circuits one through six, and we have supplies and returns with each circuit, hence the R's and the S's. My circuits one through three have the supply kind of as the, the right run that comes out, the run closer to the edge, while four, five, and six, it's actually the left. The hotter supply is closer to the edge. This is because the slab is losing most of its heat at the perimeter, so you want your hotter supply to be around the edges. The same principle follows really for traditional ducted HVAC. You want all your supplies to be around your windows and the perimeter of your house where the heat is getting lost. Feeding all the supplies through here because I won't be able to get them in once I have this mounted. First test fit of this thing. Whoa. This is cumbersome at best. Well, I guess this will actually work all right. 
I was afraid I was going to have to replumb these things. Oh, this thing is heavier than it looks. This thing needs to come up a few inches at the, at the least. Oh. All right, I'm going to put a ledger on the wall. There's quite a bit going on with this thing. Manifolds mounted, nice and level. Put on these air bleeder valves. These are gonna be needed when we fill the system. On the other side, it comes with a shutoff valve and a temperature gauge, which is good. And there's also built-in flow control meters. These are to fine tune the balance of the, the flow in all the different circuits. So you can actually change the flow with these valves as well. The supply and the return from the manifold will come right up here into the supply and the return from my distribution board. The board is the brains of the system. It houses the thermostat and controller right there, the pump, the mixing valves, which you see with these gray handles here. And conveniently, this setup came pre-plumbed exactly for the water heater that I got. So these fittings go right under the water heater and the distance from the wall for these fittings is exactly set up for the Takagi water heater that I have with the kit. I will say this prepackaged board with the water heater was not cheap. This thing was probably $1,300 and I did get an upgraded pump from the stock and the water heater was also about $1,300. So with shipping and everything, I think this whole setup was about 2,800 bucks. Now I probably could have, if I really wanted to, tried to DIY all this, procure all these components individually, but honestly, I trust the Radiant Floor Company has got it figured out already. It would have taken me forever to source all this stuff individually, get all the copper pipes connected really neatly, and it was well worth my time just to buy this prepackaged set and move on. Now time for the big boy. Holy crap. This thing is kind of heavy. Probably 60 pounds, I want to say. Heavy enough that I don't want it falling down. Literally holding $1,400 right now. So I'm going to be careful with it. All right, I'm going to try not to drop this $1,400 water heater. Oh my gosh, this is exhausting. I'm trying to hold this thing from falling down. Gotta get a fastener up there. Wow, that was really heavy, but we got her there and the pipes are just about lining up, I think. Um, I'm just sort of test fitting these. Gotta get some pipe dope on them before we like make the final connection. But overall, I think it's all fitting, which tells me they did a good job assembling it. I guess they must have piped these things with this flat on the table right next to them so that when it's on the wall, it all comes together just like it did on the table. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hook up all my tubes out of the slab to my manifold. It's a pretty simple process. The manifold came with compression couplers. All I gotta do is make sure I don't cut these too short, cut them to the right length, and the compression couplers just screw up in here, tighten around the hose, and I'm good to go. To mark these to length, I always put the actual fitting in so I can see how far this has got to go. And the pipe actually can go up into the fitting a little bit, so I keep that in mind. Then I'll push down a little bit to make sure I have some extra slack at the end of the day. Remember, you can always cut more off, but it's pretty tough to put more on. It's kind of like with a board. Double check that this is my supply. Yes, supply manifold. One of these PEX cutters is an essential tool for this job. Don't even try to do it with a knife. You just won't get as clean of a cut. And it's important to have a nice perpendicular clean cut so that this seats into the fitting correctly and you don't need to be fussing with it. And you just got to get this started by hand and finish it off with a wrench. And there she is all hooked up. Nothing to it. Let's continue wrapping the insulation around the wall. That's gonna happen anyway to mount our home run plumbing system and before we start drilling holes through for our HVAC line sets and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna keep chugging on that. For the insulation, we are using rock wool. This is a mineral wool bat insulation. Really awesome stuff. It's super dense. It's R23, it's rated higher thermally than fiberglass. It doesn't mold, it doesn't burn. So rock wool is gonna be used throughout the whole house, including 
uh, in our attic and between our floor platforms. But we'll have more videos on that to come. This stuff cuts really cleanly, just with a sharp serrated knife. Elena's over here working on a very value added activity, and that is saving our PEX fittings from our radiant test manifold. These are about a dollar each, and I'm too cheap to throw them away. So he assigns me this task that's super now, tedious. Now Elena can take all the clamps off and salvage them for, uh, for reuse later. This is how you build a home debt free. Gotta save all your plumbing fittings at every opportunity. Definitely splurge on the PEX cutters. <clears throat> I want my mic on. Do you want a mic on? Are you going to say something? I don't know. <laughs> you had me in the frame. Okay. Do you want me to be in the frame? You, you can just keep doing what you're doing. I'll, okay. I'll reference you. And by the magic of film, all the rest of the plywood in the utility room is up, at least on the exterior walls. Go ahead. This is a pretty tedious task, insulating all this and putting the plywood up, but very necessary before we start hanging all of the equipment. Elena is over here doing the last of the screwing on the plywood, Woo helping me out. Thank you. The next job is to connect our water supply to our radiant tubing manifold. But there's a few things that have to go between the tank and the manifold. First is a big sediment filter. We have this in the house we live in now and I like it, so I just bought the same thing. Then the water will flow through the manifold here as our home run manifold of Viega Manablock. Finally, it will go through this Aquapure descaler. That's like a mini water softening cartridge, just enough to keep scale from forming on the water heater. I'm gonna mount these on the wall behind me between the well pressure tank and the corner. I've been thinking about the layout a little bit in my head, but I think a lot of it's gonna be just looking at it right here on site. I gotta stay out of the way of all the other wall penetrations we still need to make here. That's our HVAC line sets, a generator box, the power for the HVAC, our hose spigot, and an outdoor outlet. So I wanna keep clear of where we want those to pop out the back of the house. Say hi. Woo! I screwed this wall. Just kidding. Elena screwed the wall. <laughs> I'm gonna try to desolder this end cap they have on here. Check out my little makeshift heat shield. I got my rock wool, which can withstand direct flame, no problem, and a little scrap of sheet metal. That is to prevent from charring our board here. Unfortunately, this piece of the board cannot be separated, unlike something like, say, this one, which has a union right here, and I'll just take that off to get the cap off. Perfect. Work like a charm. For the sake of keeping this video a reasonable length, I'm going to compress some of this supply plumbing footage. I'll go through this in more detail in our water supply video where I go through the entire water system. Okay, it's midday. Before I continue with this plumbing project, we're gonna take a minor detour, see what's going on outside. Smells like a campfire out here. What you got going on here? Miss MDA. I'm making some coffee, hopefully. My mom got me a campfire coffee percolator. I'm experimenting nice. because I'm not exactly sure how it works, but we about a month and a half ago experimented with cooking with a cast iron over coals and it worked out really well. So I figured, you know, we need coffee here when we're here. Let's go. Oh yeah, you can see see it building up the condensation. No, you'll see it. It will like look like it's bouncing. Not percolating yet, but she'll be percolating pretty soon. Fast forward, what, 10, 15 minutes, and I think we might have coffee. Yeah, it's really hot. Whoa, look at that, fire brewed coffee. Cool. That's a pretty cool coffee shop name idea for Ooh. fire brewed coffee. For or fire roasted. You're onto something. I'm honestly not the biggest coffee drinker, but on special occasion, why not? What's, He'll need the caffeine. We'll be here late. What so. is the special occasion today? You, I couldn't tell you. That it's a Actually, beautiful... Actually, it's New Year's Day. Today is the first day of the year, so it is kind of a special occasion. It's a special occasion. It's a nice, beautiful day outside. 
it was super rainy yesterday and we got to enjoy the moment too because yep. a lot of times we're working and we're not really chilling and just relaxing here so it's good to take five minutes and enjoy a fresh cup of coffee every now and then you got to remember to enjoy the process because we only got one life to live and you know soak it up what's next miss firemaster next we have a ham in our cast iron here i don't know if you can see it yummy we got a ham the cast iron doesn't shut quite all the way but i think it's going to be good enough it's going to be compressed ham when it's done well it will Spam. also have it has water in it so it should probably shrink like most meat does so it we're going to put it over these coals i just refreshed the hot coals here we're going to put it over top don't fall into the fire that's key do not fall face first into the fire <laughs> And then I'll keep this fire going next to it so that I can continue to have fresh coals. And then last time we did this, I actually shoveled some coals on top. Um, I'll probably put some in the center, but since this isn't shutting all the way, I don't want to get it too close to the edge. And then it basically works as an oven. And so we did this with a pot roast about a month and a half ago. It turned out great. I had this ham that was defrosting in the fridge and it has to cook for a long time anyways. So we're going to try it out. Couple hours later, what do we have here? Dinner! A ham. A ham! It smells fantastic oh my gosh, in here. It smells so good. That's legitimate. That is legitimate right there. Okay, so I think it might be. I don't know if this is already spiraled, but we're just gonna cut it. Cut a rip. I think it might have got a little bit overcooked, but like, whatever. Wow. My mouth Yummy. is legitimately watering <laughs> from this macro footage of a ham. Oh yeah, look at that. Whoa, it's steaming. Wow. Yummy. Brought to you in part by Craig, Noble Work Center. Whoa. Also good for cooking hams. Yep, cutting ham. Cutting hams. First piece didn't even last long enough to take a video of. Very what do you good. think? It's super good. Delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. First properly cooked ham at the property. Yep. Good stuff. First of mine ever. <laughs> Over the fire too. Check out my DIY pipe support block. It's just a couple of screws through the back of plywood into a precision cut piece of lumber, which when it's all stacked up is the same distance of this pipe from the wall. And then I'll be able to put a pipe anchor strap right over top of this. They make these metal pipe standoffs to do this job, but honestly, I think this wood block method is more sturdy and it's free. Ta-da! Here is my descaler cartridge all mounted up. Now the last step is just a little bit of copper to connect these two pipes. So I'm going to actually use a shark bite here. I know I'm probably gonna get some flack from plumbers there, but it's a really easy way to connect pipes of two different materials. And then I'm gonna attempt my first ever sweat fitting on this elbow right here. I've never sweated or soldered a copper fitting before, but I've watched a couple YouTube videos and I think that makes me an expert. Good easy tool for cutting copper. Tighten it every revolution or so and that little wheel just slices right through it. Bing. I realized that I'm an idiot. Here's why. I mounted the board just slightly too close to where this manifold is gonna go. I gotta, I'm gonna have a reducer bushing that goes in there, but I can't make this turn with an elbow with as close as this is. I think this whole board's gotta shift over about an inch and a half. Okay, I thought about it for a hot sec. I'm gonna hold off on that for now. I might be able to get it to work where it's at. I'm waiting on a single bushing that adapts to that valve there to copper. When I put the laser up there, I saw that it might work out if I'm careful. 
So I'm gonna hold off on that and just keep working on the CPVC plumbing and do what I can until I figure out whether or not that actually has to be moved. I owe the inventor of the street elbow a big one after this because they saved me. A street elbow can fit into a normal fitting and that allowed me to make the bend as tightly as I possibly could to make it work for my situation. That's 16 soldered copper joints, and if none of those leak when I put water to these, it will be an absolute Christmas miracle. I only singed a little bit of the hair off my hand, got a little bit frisky with the torch, but overall, I think I did an okay job, not a fantastic job as my first time ever soldering, but hopefully we'll hold water. Here's the joints close up. I haven't shined them up with Scotch-Brite or anything, which I will do later. So I'm sure the plumbers out there are probably gonna be cringing at this, but I saved some money and learned a new skill in the process. The next step is to get this gas pipe up in that narrow joist bay above me. Then I gotta use three inch solid core PVC, not foam core, to snake down and into the top uh, intake and exhaust vents of this water heater. This is a concentric vent. You can hold off on the dirty jokes, please. But this allows a single wall penetration for both the intake and exhaust of the water heater. It's called concentric because there's an inner pipe and an outer pipe with the inner being the exhaust and the outer being the intake. The exhaust shoots straight out the back. You can see right through it. And then the intake comes in behind this and it, through the outer pipe. I've got literally the largest bit in my spider hole saw set, four and a half inches, and I'm gonna be going up through the rim board in that narrow joist opening. I'll start the hole from the inside and finish it going from outside in. Drill's dead. <laughs> That's a good looking hole. First hole in the exterior of our house. The wind is blowing sawdust in through my vent. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to bring both of these down with fittings. And of course my water heater intake and exhaust is reversed from the intake and exhaust on this. This exhaust pipe coming out the back of this vent is going to have to come to this right vent on the water he heater and vice versa with the other vent. We've just glued our inner and outer pipes to the Y fitting here, the concentric Y fitting. And now I'm gonna be putting on my 90. This is gonna go straight down into my exhaust port of the, of the, the water heater, it'll need one jog in it. And then I'm gonna to have to snake my intake pipe around that exhaust pipe and into my intake port of the water heater. So let's glue this up. Do you want me to do the cement? Or... No. Does it have to be a certain angle? Mm-hmm. Coming straight down. It's gluing on here, the intake one? Yep. So this is my intake 45 and it's going on the 45 of the Y fitting to create a 90 degree angle downwards. Nice thing about doing this in the cold is the glue takes much longer to set up, so you're not rushing nearly as much. I think you need more. You're being kind of stingy on it's your glue. fine. <laughs> stingy, Alex. It's not holding any liquid at all. Just air, very, very low pressure air. This has got to go in, so we'll, we'll dry fit it first, sort of mark orientation. I like to use the injection molding parting lines of the fittings, that, that way you can, you know, you know you're perfectly straight, so you can you see the parting line there? Mm-hmm. Bringing that right up onto the fitting, it will. Okay. All right, I dropped the ball on filming the rest of this because I just wanted to get it done. But you can see my setup here. My concentric vent is tucked up here in the joist bay. I have that firmly fastened with a uh, two by four in between the joist and a piece of pipe strap. I set the position of that vent in the wall so that my 90 off the end of it could come straight down into my exhaust. And then the intake, I figured I would just work around that. So the intake also comes straight down. Notice I have these Fernco adapters here. They're just rubber couplings. It'll allow me, if I ever need to replace this boiler, I can easily disconnect this. And then I basically just use two 90s and a 45 to get around my exhaust pipe and down into the intake vent of the boiler. Now that we're locked in on the inside with some straps, I made some marks here where our siding is gonna go to, where the end of the cone needs to go to. It's gotta be between one and two inches from the end, the edge of the wall. And then where our current cone ends. So the distance between this and the current cone and where I want it to end is an inch and a half. So I'm gonna cut off an inch and a half from each one of these pipes. 
My oscillating multi-tool made short work of cutting these pipes to length, and then I used Zip Liquid Flash to seal that outer pipe to my sheathing. Before fastening the cap on permanently, I have to put a bird screen in and put my flashed siding block on. Water supply is all hooked up, everything's soldered. I have all my unions and stuff glued in. Let's talk pressure testing. I built this little rig here with a pressure gauge, an air tire inflator, and a T fitting to hook into my PEC system. All I did was put it right into one of these compression fittings, my extra one that I'm not gonna use anyway. And I should be able to pressurize the whole system because the hot and cold actually connect on this board and it'll go all the way out to my PEX home run manifold that's up behind me. I'm just gonna do 60 PSI of air. That's the max working pressure in my system because of the well pressure tank switch cutoff. I know on CPVC pipe, the glue says do not test with air, so I figure I shouldn't test my luck with that in case there's a blowout or anything. But I'm just praying that all my solder joints hold, so we'll see. Are you filling it up or feeding it out? Filling it up. The main culprit of my pressure test was actually these copper unions. Both of these were leaking pretty substantially. So I used my blue pipe dope here, blue monster, and that actually was able to seal up the unions quite well. I was really surprised. The second culprit was these compression fittings and that just needed no more than a turn or two to seal these off. I did have a really small slow leak that I could hear actually coming out of the valves on this Viega mana block but it was like a trickle of air. So of course I couldn't hold air overnight, but I'm pretty confident my radiant system is not going to be leaking water when I go to pressurize it. All the plumbing on this board came pre-pressure tested. Radiant Floor Company had capped off all the inputs and outputs of the board and done their own testing ahead of time. So I'm confident that none of this will leak anyway. As you can tell by the way I'm dressed, it's freezing out. And I don't wanna let all the water into this system without the system ready to turn on and get heat into this floor so that we can prevent our pipes from freezing. It's tough enough to keep just our well pressure tank warm enough to not freeze. We have this thing wrapped up with heat tape and I have a plastic sheet over it. And that is stressful enough to worry about that thing freezing. So I definitely don't wanna worry about this whole control board freezing and getting run. So we've got our water supply, we've got our venting. The next step, for hooking up our boiler is gas. That's this yellow flexible connector hose here. I bought this whole setup with the drip leg and the ball valve all together in one kit. It was a little bit expensive, but it makes the setup look really professional. And this flexible pipe is going to go into what I'm going to be basically fabricating, which is a rigid manifold. This contraption is gonna have a pipe that sticks through our exterior wall and will connect to our line outside coming from the propane tank. Again, I'll condense this gas pipe footage because I will be going over this in detail in the video where we do our final pressure test and connection with the propane tank. It's a pretty simple black iron manifold with shut off valves controlling each of my two legs, one to the water heater, one to our cooking stove. One really important thing to note about gas piping is that it needs to be fully grounded so that if it ever gets struck by lightning, there's a direct path to ground and your gas piping doesn't explode. To do this ground, I ran a number six THHN wire from the gas pipe straight to the grounding bus of our electric panel. Now that we're bonded, interior gas work is done. On to condensate drain. I swear there is like a million connections to this heater. We got hot and cold supply, gas, condensate, an actual power outlet, and an intake and an exhaust. It's just a ton of plumbing to go with an appliance like this. So to refresh, this baby makes condensate as it operates. It's just a drip of water steadily, and it's actually fairly acidic. So for our septic system, I'm gonna use one of these. This is an acid neutralizer. It's got some media in here that water passes from one end to the other and the pH raises close to seven, which is neutral. I'm gonna be running a three quarter inch PVC line out of here. The instructions for this say it actually does not need a condensate trap, so I'm not gonna put one on, but it does need an overflow in case this thing ever gets blocked up uh, so that the condensate doesn't back up into the unit and it overflows. This condensate drain will be shared by my indoor air handler unit for our ducted system and for the ductless mini splits that we're putting in the garage. So starting around here, my indoor air handler will sit. I have to run a pipe at a quarter inch per slope down all the way over here, pick up my condensate neutralizer where the tankless is, and then run it all the way around the other rest of the room to that floor drain right there. We'll have another Y so the mini splits can pick up somewhere around here and then there will be a pipe sticking out just over that floor drain with a two inch air gap.
This is how I'm gonna slope my condensate drain all the way around this room at a quarter inch per foot right on the money. Starting at the floor drain, I came up my two inch air gap, came over to this T here, and then set my laser at the bottom of this T where this pipe comes out. That is my reference line and I can measure from it anywhere around the room. So what I did was measure to the corner here behind me. There's five feet until the corner and I know my pipe's gonna have to come up a quarter inch per foot. So that's five quarters or one and a quarter inch. So all I had to do was measure up from my red laser line an inch and a quarter and drive a screw in there. My pipe can then sit on top of that screw for a dry fitment. And then it's just rinse and repeat all the way around the room. And as I go along fastening, just as a sanity check, I'll stick the bubble level on there. Not super easy to see, but the edge of that bubble, the left edge is on my quarter inch per foot line, right on the money. Okay, so I got my conduit finally done here. It's fastened to the wall. I did just let it run wild that way because my furnace air handler and my mini split is gonna have to tie into that over there. So this is gonna be good enough for just the boiler. And I do have one last final piece I gotta put on, if I can find it. Oh, I'm gonna put these little clean out caps on my openings here. That way I can just blow compressed air down there if this ever gets gummed up with algae. Sometimes condensate lines can do that because the water is moving so slowly in them. I put one up here too, probably unnecessary, but I did it, so why not? Now let's test it. Let's check our floor drain. Any water coming out? Hey, look at that. We'll take it, we'll take it. Okay, we just got our gas service hooked up and that means one thing. I gotta do one little circuit here, just an outlet to power this boiler and the circulator pump here and I can fire this thing up. I am expecting a bit of a learning curve when it comes to actually bleeding the air and everything out of this thing, but that's probably gonna be a topic for another video. I am just so stoked to finally be at the point where I can fire the system up. We've been very fortunate that it's a super mild winter this year. I don't think it's hardly got below freezing, I feel like, I don't know, a week out of the winter. We're in March now, but I can't complain a whole lot because we don't have siding on yet. We don't have heat in here and we do have this well pressure tank that's full of water. So I've been putting a plastic sheet over this and you can see my janky setup here and it attempts to keep this thing from freezing. I got some just regular old heat tape Got it wrapped around our ball valve with some insulation zip tied on. Not great, but hey, it hasn't frozen yet anyway. Anyways, I'm gonna try to make short work of this circuit. I gotta put another breaker in here, probably just a 20 amper, and run a 12-2 wire, basically following where this green wire is, except I'm gonna put an outlet right over there next to that board, and then I will continue that circuit all the way around here. I'm gonna put another outlet for that septic alarm box over there. And this is the benefit of running plywood everywhere. You can just mount stuff wherever the heck your little heart desires. Ready for wire. And just like that, our circuit is roughed in. I don't ever pretend to be an electrician or a tradesman of any sort, really. I'm a definite DIYer, but I do try to mimic the trades and try to do as best as I possibly can with neatness and workmanship. That way, when the inspector shows up, it actually looks like a real tradesman did it and not a DIYer. <laughs> but I'm curious, if there's any tradesman watching this right now, if you're an electrician or a plumber, please critique my work. Like, like for example, does this look like a plumber did this or does this look like a DIYer did it? I haven't spent a ton of time around these special setups. I've seen you know pictures and stuff, but if you think this looks like a plumber did it, give me a thumbs up. So the plan is to put a plug here and that is where my hot water heater will plug into. Then bring a wire over here and down to the pump relay. Continuing the circuit around behind our water thing. I'm gonna make a quick detour outside. I'm gonna do my outdoor outlet off this circuit and then finally end it at this circuit, just or this plug, just for this little box here. It doesn't really use any power at all. They couldn't have made this a whole lot easier to hook up to. They have the board labeled and everything. We got our neutral and our line in. So I'm gonna bring a 12 gauge wire up and into here and terminate them right there.
All right, fast forward a bit. Got my GFCI outlet in here. You can see I got the power turn on. There's a little green LED here. It tells me it's looking good. Test it. Ah, geez, reset. Should be good to go. I wired this so that the line coming in here goes into the top terminals of the GFCI. And then the load, I actually, since I have these two of these Romex wires coming in, one for this, one to continue on. There's actually a, a way to connect two wires into the back of these GFCI outlets. They provide a cable clamp, and that way you can do away with actually having to do a pigtail, which just crowds the box even more. The only pigtail I had to put in was for the grounding of this box. The metal boxes have to be grounded. So I did have a short pigtail with a wire cap linking all the grounds together. Anyway, I can plug this baby in now, finally. We have power. Before this radiant system will work on its own, it needs this little guy, which is a thermostat. This is just a simple, non-programmable non thermostat. It came with the kit, and it should be pretty easy to install. There's six terminals, a hot and a neutral to power it, a two terminals for the sensor wire that I'm gonna tape to the floor, and then two control wires that will go back to the switching relay. Now, I thought about installing this right next to my panel here and just taping the sensor to the floor here, but this is right at the edge of my slab and the tubing is not really kind of in the normal grid pattern that it usually is at this point. So I don't think it's gonna be a very representative spot. The thermostat also senses ambient temperature in the room, and so I don't really want it being influenced by any of all the hot water coming through these pipes. So instead, I'm mounting it basically just off the door of the utility room here. I just put this temporary little block up. I'm gonna eventually put a whole sheet of plywood there once I get all my rough and plumbing done, but the thermostat will mount here, and then I'm just gonna run the wire down and tape it to the concrete floor right beneath. This is more of a central location in the slab, and it's also out of the way of the garage doors opening, which is gonna let cold air in and influence that ambient air temperature. I bought this 18-8 wire, which is eight conductors. It's actually four more than I need. I'm gonna be using that for my main HVAC system too, though, so that's what I really bought it for. Uh, but I'm just going to run that because I have plenty of it. I had to make a couple of these little backing strips in order to mount this thing and still be able to fish wires behind it. Ow. Ow. So this will go like that, and that way there's actually a gap right here that I can get a wire behind. Otherwise, they're expecting you to do this on drywall so that the wire would just be coming straight out of the drywall. Not the case in my case. Have to be right about there. Oh my gosh, you'd think I'd learn my lesson. And if I ever sever any of these conductors for any reason, well, then I got four more I can substitute them with. I should probably strip more of this jacket off. Almost need a needle nose pliers for this job. Getting these little things in here. Where'd my needle nose go? Oh, there it is. Definitely kind of tricky to get all these in here at the same time when they're like the same length. Sort of have to kind of have them in their little respective outlet and then just send it all together. Might as well do the floor sensor while I'm here. This is only 22 gauge wire, so a little bit thinner. Wire gauge gets thinner as the number goes up. Now I'm not gonna get too crazy with this because I, like I said, I'm gonna have to put a piece of plywood here against the wall, but I'm just gonna take a tiny piece of zip tape, which is very good stuff. And I clean this little spot here with some, just some water and a rag and I'm just gonna tape this thing to the floor. That's what the Radiant Floor Company people say to do. I figure they've done a lot of these systems. That they know what's going on. Really good customer support too. Company's actually called Radiant Floor Company. This is all they do, make heating systems. I want this thing out of the way as much as possible. I'm gonna put it like here. Hopefully the zip tape should stick to the floor quite well for our temporary application here. Now I'll just dress this cable up, tie up the excess. I swear by the time this project's done, I'll have run a mile of wire. There are just so many wires that go into a house. Thermostat wires, regular wires, ethernet wires. You just, you name it, there's a wire for it. Got these wire strippers from Harbor Freight and they are the bomb. 
one squeeze and this little tiny wire is stripped. Just like that. Put one of these little gray conduit adapters over here. Maybe, maybe it's not a conduit adapter. I don't know what you call these things. Cable clamp, I guess is the right term. Probably should hook these up before I put that in. Thermostat wire is officially run. I think we are finally ready to put water into the system, bleed the air out of it, cross our fingers, and fire it up.